and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Stalking the Middle Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Uncle AK. And I'm Reflex. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm good, bro. How are you? Man, I'm good, man. I like that sweater. It's kind of... It's gold. What is it? Fuji? Kuji? Nah, we ain't doing Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate y'all checking this podcast. If you are faithful to this podcast, we appreciate you. If you are new watching on YouTube, hit subscribe and check in with us every week. Mm-hmm. This podcast episode is sponsored by Perfect Office Solution. They provide office space, affordable, professional, and flexible for entrepreneurs in the DMV area. If you use promo code SITM Podcast, you get 10% off. Just let them know we sent you. And uh, yeah, you get that sweet deal. Again, we on Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, and all that good stuff. Appreciate y'all spending this time with us, man. We got a special guest in the building. Yeah, very special guest in the building, man. We're going back to science school today. I'm ready, man. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? Tell me about the chemistry, <laughs> physics, all that stuff. Oh, yeah, man. I'm excited for this. Thank you for coming. Do us the honors and you just guess, bro. Yes, sir. Here's the president, founder, and CEO of Eco Friendly Plastic Materials, LLC. Providing cost effective environmental friendly plastic products for industries. Please welcome Dr. Michael Curry to Stuck in the Middle Podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. How you doing, sir? How Great. Doing? How are you guys doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Yeah, yeah. So you right. just got done with a presentation, actually. Right. So um, we are in D.C. So I landed in D.C. on Wednesday. Uh, it was still snowing when we landed. Um, and we were at a conference called uh, ERN, it's an Emerging Researchers uh, National Conference on STEM. Mm-hmm. And um, I have a student there showcasing an invention that we have in agriculture. And then we had a, another set of students there showcasing an invention we have in uh, looking at how to extract uh, essential minerals from agricultural waste while remediating that uh, agricultural waste. Yeah. So when you say landed, um, where you where are you coming from? I'm coming from uh, Road Tide, uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Alabama, yeah, 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 yeah. Alabama shout, right? out, shout out, shout out, shout out. Man, how do you how how you enjoying the weather here? I'm enjoying the weather, <laughs> but I I, I weather go. I'm gonna go back to warmer climates. <laughs> <laughs> so you are a you? professor at uh, Tuskegee right now? Right. So I hold a couple of roles. Uh, I'm a associate professor at Tuskegee University. Um, I work in the chemistry and material science and engineering department, and then I also um, consult with. Stillman College, where I'm their senior research director, and my company actually actually sits on their campus. Mm. Yeah, before we get into all of that, uh, who's Dr. Michael? You know, who, like, if someone asks you, who are you? I mean, what would you say? Uh, Dr. Michael is, uh, he's a simple guy. Um, he's someone who loves, you know, sports, and on top of it all, he loves mentoring young uh, uh, minorities and showing them, uh, you know, exactly what you can do when you put your mind to it, you know, becoming an innovator, becoming a problem solver, it's, it's things that I like to mentor and do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You spoke a little bit, I mean, you spoke about STEM. Uh, how important is STEM in today's society? STEM uh, is, oh, so it's critical for today's society. We just touched on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I say that because one of the things that uh, we run into is that, you know, as, as I look at all the inventions, all the technology that's coming out, right? Yeah. And that's making our lives so much better. But at the end of the day, when we're done with that technology, what happens to it, right? That technology is ending up in our water supplies and our food supplies, right? It's creating a problem. So, uh, you know, and plus STEM, you know, the workforce, how are we going to solve that problem if we don't have the proper personnel skill to go into that workforce to solve that problem? And so, you know, STEM is now becoming a major focus. Like, you know, so who's going to solve that problem? How are we going to solve that problem? How are we going to educate them to solve that problem? You know, becoming innovative inside the classroom now, how you teach STEM because the, the generation has changed. Right? Are minorities in, interested in STEM? Do you see? Do you find? Well, see, that's one of the things. We're trying to increase the amount of minorities who are interested in STEM because, you know, typically when I was going to school, you know, when I thought about STEM, you know, they showed me Einstein, mm-hmm. right? Now we're trying to put, you know, uh, a minority figure there. If it's a female, we want to put a female figure there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if it's a, uh, you know, an international, uh, you know, an African, we want to put an African there. If, if it's a, you know, um, a, a, a black man, we want to put a black man there. We want to change the way minorities look at STEM because, let's face it, you know, we, our limitations, we're limited by what we see. Right. right. We, like, think about it, when Obama became president, everybody was like, oh, okay. I can be president now because we have a figure that we have a, a, a national black figure in the president's office, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, changing the the way they see and the way they view STEM is the key to getting more African Americans, more minorities into the field. 
Yeah. What, what got you interested, you know, as, as far as, like, you coming into science and STEM? And well, so what got me interested in science, uh, I come from a very small town uh, in Bay Springs, Mississippi. And it's right, in, you know, right close to Louisiana. Uh, but, you know, science there was, you know, t- t- you know, taking litmus paper and going out to the lake and, you know, and kind of testing the acidity of the water. Boiling a frog. Uh, right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I, you know, I ended up joining the United States military mm-hmm. and uh, United States Navy and actually um, rode a nuclear powered submarine for my time in the Navy. Mm-hmm. And I saw all this technology. You know, it was like wonderful, like, oh, so this can do that. And then start thinking, well, can I do this? Right. And so I decided I wanted to go back to school. Um, I went to the University of Alabama, Road Tide. And uh, one of the things when I was there, I was there, uh, it was only two minorities in the program. And I was like, whoa, you know, it was kind of a, a realization for me at that point that we were actually lacking minorities, right? And so while in that program, um, the chair of that apartment actually came to us and was like, look, can you help us, you know, to increase the minority enrollment? And so he was like, you guys are going to pave the way. So, you know, what you leave behind is what they're going to see. And so, you know, we worked hard, we traveled, we tried to recruit minorities and try to show them that, you know, it's not just... You know, it takes a diverse set of minds at the table to solve a problem. Yeah. Right? You are the president and CEO of um, Eco-Friendly Plastic Materials, LLC. Mm-hmm. Um, before we even jump into that, um, we talk a lot about, you know, eco-friendly ecosystems and all that. What really is eco Like when somebody say eco-friendly, what does that mean? Right. So when you say eco-friendly, okay, you can say something that's eco-friendly, but it's not bio-friendly, right? Eco-friendly just means that it's not going to damage the environment. Okay, it may not damage the environment, but when I consume it, is it going to damage you know yeah, my, yeah. my my bio system? And so at Eco-Friendly uh, LLC, uh, Plastic Material LLC, one of the things that we brought us up, and when we say eco-friendly, we mean it's eco-friendly such that it doesn't destroy the environment, but it's also bio-compatible. Right? So eco-friendly could have several different meanings. It just depends on what your intentions are. Mm-hmm. How long has your company been in uh, existence? So the company was uh, enacted in or incorporated in April of last year, actually. Mm-hmm. And we so it, it, and when I incorporated the company, I was like, okay, this is going to take a process. Because most companies, when you start them, fail right and, and within the first couple of years. But one of the things I realized quickly was that, hey, as a, as a researcher, I'm not trained. Uh, you know, in business. So I'm not trained. They didn't train me to be an entrepreneur. They trained me to be a research scientist, mm-hmm. right? And so I had to bring on people, bring people on board who could actually, one, speed date me and educate me, and then number two, help my business grow by bringing in their entrepreneurship skills. And so one of the uh, guys that represent my company, uh, he's the dean of business at Stillman. Uh, he used to work in the Obama, Obama administration. And so he has a lot of contacts. And he has a lot of uh, talented people under 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 him. Uh, Demetri Gallagher is one of the people who works hand in hand with my company as far as branding, uh, putting me in the correct spotlights for his federal uh, or introducing me to the right people. And so it's really about and I kind of try to take a play out of Obama's book when he became president. You know, what did he do? He surrounded <laughs> himself with with the starting five, right? And so that's what I think about. It's you know, you know, to be an entrepreneur means that you don't do you don't know everything and you gotta realize that you don't know everything and then you can go outside of your limitations. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Dimitri Gallagher, that name sounds familiar. What what is the the purpose of uh you know eco friendly plastic materials LLC? What is the mission? So the mission is two parts. The first mission is research and development and to innovate uh, solutions that can solve, you know, critical problems that exist in the world. The second is to help bring about diversity in uh, the STEM field as far as innovation is concerned. What I mean by that, I think about when I was going to school. I wasn't, you know, they trained me to be this excellent researcher, but they didn't tell me, you know, you need to keep an eye for innovation. And then not only keep an eye out for innovation, but you need to keep an eye out for if it's commercializable mm. and if it can go to solve a problem. So we got to be intentional about how we train our uh, students now, yeah. right? We got to be very intentional. We got to say, listen, you're going to be a great researcher. But in that research, you need to look to see if there's some kind of innovation there 
that could, you know, help society, that can benefit society. It's not all about making money. It's about, you know, so having a world that's sustainable. Yeah. When people speak about research, is this a, like an individual thing or is it a group thing or it depends? Well, see, okay, so research has evolved. It used to be when I was, you know, in a grad in a graduate school setting, uh, and it, and it kind of evolved even as I was a graduate student, was that you go in the lab and you do your own work and then, you know, you pass it on to your, whoever your boss or your advisor. But now it's become, research has been so integrated at so many different interfaces of science. For instance, one of our innovation has biology, chemistry, material science, engineering, and chemical engineering all wrapped into one project. And so you can no longer work as a, you know, a lone wolf. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to work in diverse settings and you have to be able to communicate, communicate across, you know, global, mm. you know, boundaries. You can no longer even just sit in America because somebody could be working on something in Africa. Somebody could be working on something in Germany that could be beneficial to your project and to help it grow. Yeah, that's benefit of also, you know, the technology. You're not just confined to the libraries and checking out books. Right, know, correct. Yeah. Right. What, 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 what services and products does your company uh, offer and how are they beneficial for, you know, some everyday people like 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 me? Right, okay. So, okay, so one of the things that is going to benefit, you know, people like you like you guys or people like us, just the world in general. I, mean, I always refrain from using those terms like people because we are all one people, right? Mm -hmm. We are all on this earth together, and so we got to keep it clean. Uh, one of the things that is going to benefit you guys is that we developed a process. So this company was, is founded on that we developed a process that will make plastics biodegradable. And they biodegrade depending on whether they plant-based or whether they just petroleum-based. Plant-based, the, the biodegrade in less than 60 days. Um, if it's petroleum-based, then it's 100 days or less. And it makes the petroleum-based materials recyclable. And so now can you imagine... You know, I, I look at, uh, I was at the uh, restaurant in the hotel just a few minutes ago before I came here, and they gave me a straw, but the straw was paper. And so they, I was like, wait a minute, so you guys don't have plastic straws anymore? And they was like, no, you know, because in D.C., you guys have to pay for a plastic. I think bags cost like 10, 10, 10 mm -hmm. cents extra, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But imagine now when you go to the store, and the reason that a bag costs 10 cents extra is because they are planning for remediation, right? They're trying to recycle it. Well, imagine you don't have that 10 cent charge anymore because you just now had a, a, a bag that you can go bury in your backyard and it will biodegrade. Is this, is this something out, there, out right now like that, or is this like cutting edge? There are all types of, you know, biodegradability. It, it, is a loose word um you know some companies say oh this is you know biodegradable and they just have some biodegradable components in it right the, the whole the whole plastic is not biodegradable you know our plastic is made of two components only the cellulose and the plastic the, the plastic material that we're gonna you know use to make whatever a bottle a bag or you know whatever we're gonna make with it so if the whole thing is biodegradable right our our plastics are 100 percent biodegradable mm. Yeah, we were just talking earlier um, before, <clears throat> before it came live um, about there are places, you know, around the world, say, in, you know, Africa or, right. or in, you know, in, in Europe where there's like, you know, this huge, you know, this huge pile of plastic. Down, yeah, yeah right. it's right in India too, you know, right. plastic. Um, do you, like, do you guys um, contract with companies who take this plastic mm -hmm. and recycle them and, you know, hand them over to you to, uh, to, to, to do what you do to make right. them biodegradable? Right, so, so first... First of all, let's, let's establish what type of company we really are. We're a research, research and development company. And what that means is that we do the innovation behind um, the manufacturing. So we go in, we look at a process, and we say, okay, can we uh, develop a way that you know, makes this process better? If so, then we license it out to someone to manufacture. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and speaking to your, directly to your, your question, we're working with a young lady out of New York. Her name is Elsa. Um, she's formed a company, and she's looking at the issue in Haiti. As you know, Haiti got hit by that tsunami, right? And it left when it when the water receded, it left a lot of trash, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of plastic trash there. They don't know what to do with this trash, and so they're actually coming up with a process where they can recycle this trash. Part of it goes to developing a fuel for energy, and then the other part they want to re uh, turn back into a, a useful plastic and so we're working with them to use our process so that when they can ship that plastic in 
and we're going to innovate on it and see how we can you know melt that plastic down reprocess it using our process so that when it goes back out on the market it, before it wasn't biodegradable but now it is biodegradable and so it doesn't create that same problem yeah. that existed before so let me get this straight um, you do not have any plants where you create bottles. No. So we don't have a plant anywhere. Uh, mm-hmm. We wanted to just stay into the research and development because, like I said, my uh, company has two missions. One is the research and development and innovation. And then the second one is to create more innovators. Mm-hmm. You know, when I leave, I'm not going to be here always, right? So when I leave, we got to have more innovators to come behind me, right? And we got definitely got to have more uh, African Americans and minorities of all descent, right, to come to the table because it's only when you have a diverse set of minds that you really get a, a, a solution that's viable to, you know, uh, solve world problems. Yeah. I think of, um, like, when they talk about trademark, you know, when they talk about trademarking mm-hmm. your product and licensing and all that, uh, how how do you license, you know, your prototypes to um, a variety of companies without, um, without creating a system of, oh, this person is suing the other person for, you know, the same trademark, I guess. Well, a good friend a good friend of mine who's representing my company, his name is Isaac McCoy, he told me, he said, listen, you're not somebody until you're sued. Somebody is going to take your invention and somebody's going to use your invention, right? And you're going to go to court about it and they're going to pay you, right? So that's inevitable. I mean, that's going to happen. But, you know, of course, the licensing process, uh, that's a simple, you know, sitting down at the table and saying, hey, I have a solution. You have the manufacturing capabilities. Let's partner together and uh, develop this, uh, you know, these plastics mm-hmm. that can be, uh, you know, better for the environment. And and we recently just went through, you know, a partnership with uh, uh, New Composite Partners out of Edgerton, uh, Wisconsin. We actually flew up there when it was negative 26 degree weather. Imagine going Yeesh. from Alabama, which was like 75, 80 degrees, and we stepped off the plane, and it was like, oh, yeah, it's negative 26. We were like, oh, my God, right? So <laughs> so we went there. We didn't let them, we braved the weather, and we formed a par- partnership, and now they are actually trying to get our materials uh, USDA preferred, meaning that it would be uh, mandated that people use our stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Which is a good thing, right? It's a good thing. But- Partnering, in that, but going beyond that, you know, can we partner with other companies uh, to develop materials that's going to be better for the environment? Can, can we change the way, you know, that we uh, approach the, the the problems itself? Right? Uh, Patagonia contacted us, and they're looking at can we make fibers? Right? Can, can we make uh, fibers that can go in the clothing out of our materials? And we're like, oh yeah, sure. That's it. It's simply going back to the lab, doing the research and development. And then creating the innovation and then giving it off to you guys so that you can do whatever you need to do with it. How long does this research normally take? Because do we make it sound? It sounds like something you do over, over you know, overnight. It, it sounds easy, but it's, you know, it's de- it's called dedication. Uh, I started in Tuskegee in 2009. Um, I actually, um, put, I worked with Purdue University on a project. Uh, we were looking at the remedi- remediation of electronic waste. Uh, it took uh, our students, students who've never been out of Alabama, and flew them to India, right? And I, I actually took one of my students and flew them to California from Alabama to get them used to flying on a plane because you you about to make a what eighteen hour trip yeah, on yeah. a plane you've <laughs> never flown on a plane before. I'm like, oh, that's not gonna be good. But so you know, it started there. We're looking at uh, remediation of waste. So in 2009, I started looking at cellulose. Uh, except for then, at that point, we was actually pulling the cellulose apart and not trying to keep it together. And uh, about three years later, uh, we saw the news where they showed the plastic island that was forming in the ocean. And that's when it clicked, like, okay, we gotta do something about this. You know, we gotta, at that point, we started being very intentional about our research. It's like, okay, we're gonna solve, we're gonna try to find a solution that will solve this problem. Three questions. When does, you know, this hit the stores? Uh, how much research do you, do you have? How do you get funding, and what are some practical ways that you personally are doing as far as like eco-friendly stuff that you do to help our environment and help okay. yourself? Yeah. Okay. So the first question was, let's go back to this. You know, say where 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 can I go to Giant or wherever? Okay. And buy some eco-friendly stuff? <laughs> okay. So the there's a but, and this is me learning about entrepreneurship. This is why I say we got to educate 
or you know STEM professionals, uh, research professional about entrepreneurship. There's a lot of red tape in going into getting your product out on the market, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so uh, you know you got that's human capital. There's uh, you know manufacturing capital. There's contracts. There's license agreements that you have to sign with the university. Right to for your company to be to be able to use the product, and so uh, one of the things that we're hoping is that um, by let's say June we'll have one product now out on the market. But every but you know the good news is everybody is trying to solve this problem, and everybody is looking for a solution, and everybody is trying to be helpful. So nobody's there's no resistance, right? It's just you know going through the proper steps to make sure that all the necessary paperwork are you know signed, all the necessary. Uh, partnerships are made so that you can get that product to the market. As far as me personally, you know, my personal view of what I'm trying to do to help, you know, better the environment, I'm trying to create the next wave of innovators, right? Because if you think about it, you know, innovation uh, has for a long time only come from primary white institutions, right? Well, HBCUs, historically black universities, have innovation in their classrooms they have innovations all over the place but we haven't been taught to identify those innovations right so now we need to be like i said very intentional about our education you know how do we educate you know our minorities to intentionally become innovators and, and instead of learn like change the way we learn right even in the classroom innovating in the classroom my company interface with uh stillman college and one of the things that i did was I interfaced with the art department and I said, we're going to do this project called um, So You Think You Can Design, like um, So you think you, can, you, you think You Can Dance, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're designing a um, keychain, a Stillman College keychain that they're going to market to their alumni. And I'm going to 3D, my company's going to 3D print it for them using our eco-friendly materials. Well, then I challenged the business department, okay, now you got to come up with a marketing strategy for, uh, for this material that the uh, in, that the um, uh, arts department is designing, right? And then I challenged the science department, okay, now you got to make it better. So now you got to come up with something, an, uh, an additive that can go to it that will make it sparkle or make it, you know, change colors or whatever, you know, that will be uh, you know, feasible to sell to the alumni. It will attract, you know, the public attention. And so that's what I mean by innovation. Not just sitting there with a book, learning, okay, you know, Einstein or this was discovered, but or this material does it, but let's apply it, yeah. right? Let's apply it. Because when do you learn? It's when you apply stuff, right? Right, right, right. right. right? That's when you learn. I feel like that's a good strategy because uh, most of us who, you know, went to school prior to this time, you know, all we did was read, 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 and we never had the opportunity to actually, you know, apply what we, you know, studying. Read to pass the test. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right. Some people say, you know, go out for um, internships and stuff, but not everybody's opportunity to go for internships because of, you know, your daily activities, you mm -hmm. know, your, your life, your, your lifestyle or how you were raised. <clears throat> so I feel like um, bringing this into schools, you know, will, will, will make the students actually have something on their resume per se. Right. Right. Yeah. How can how can uh, we, you know, take that process, the one you just described into real life situations? OK, so first of all, we got to be very intentional. And I keep using that word because. We're not in, like, even when you go in the classroom, we're not intentional as to what we're about to teach you, right? We, we're going to, yeah, we're intentional about the concept, but we're not, when I say intentional about what, what we're about to teach you, I mean, that means bringing in something that represents what we just, what we just, you know, displayed to you so that it will click. So how do we do this in our everyday life? You know, how do we bring this to our everyday life? We got to be very intentional about what we do. It depends. If, if, you know, even if you are, you know, let's say a, a, a janitor, right? Be very intentional about the chemicals that you use. Read the chemicals, see which one has, present which effects, right? Educate yourself about your job. Educate yourself about how to be, how to go along in a sustainable manner, how to be eco-friendly, right? So we just gotta be very intentional. Mm. Global warming is a you know, big topic right now. It's even in the presidential debates. Where do you fall in the, in the discussion of the spectrum? Of the political arena? <laughs> no, 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 no. Global warming. Global warming? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you know, <clears throat> I think everybody have their perspective on global warming, right? To me, you know, it's here. You can see it. Climate change is real, right? Um, in Alabama, one day it was 45 degrees. The next day it was 80 degrees. 
that's a that's kind of to me like Colorado. I was in Colorado. They say if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. It'll change. It'll just, <laughs> five minutes will be snowing. The next minute it'll be sun. Next minute it'll be raining. Right. Well, Alabama is like that now. Alabama has really never been like that, right? We had a snowstorm in Alabama not too, uh, last year. We, we were supposed to have one this year, but we didn't have one. So climate change is here, whether you believe it or not. Uh, you know, our, I guess our president doesn't believe in climate change, but I do, right? And, and, and I can see it. Uh, but, you know, that, that's just my position on it. I, I think climate change is here, and we have to do something about it. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what your company is doing, is, it's, it's great. And, you know, we live in a, a giant society, a giant globe. There's people in Africa right now doing their own thing, have no idea what you're doing. And uh, so how, what, what are some forward-thinking ways that you plan on, you know, bringing everybody on board as far as, like, eco-friendliness and taking care of steward, proper stewarding our planet? Okay, so one of the things that, uh, one is getting the word out, right? So that's what I mean by education. Uh, my company has an education, uh, education uh, mission. I don't want to just invent a plastic that you can use that you can go bury in the backyard it's biodegradable i actually want to educate you about the plastic so you know my logo we actually changed the logo we got a new logo where it has a barcode sorry, a barcode on that logo and in that barcode we're going to start embedding information about our plastics like for instance you know why is it eco-friendly you know what can you do to recycle it or you know where can you find it edu- or in- even information or about you know biodegradable materials what are biodegradable materials so who are we what are other are there other companies out there that are developing <clears throat> that are developing biodegradable materials so and then partnering right partnering with people from a, a, on a global level and realizing that we can't do it all right so it has to be a bigger network creating incubation centers that were you know think tanks where ideas can flow in mm-hmm. and products can flow out right it's, I, I think that's the way to you know globalizing and uh the green revolution really yeah um prior to going on um we we're talking about uh you and a chemist graduate student in the name of um demetrius finley um you created you know a means of delivering nutrients to plants through mm-hmm. plants how i mean how does that work how is that possible okay so after the plastic discovery uh, my student uh donald white and demetrius finley actually so donald white uh is a, the student that discovered uh that made the discovery on a plastic uh he's a phd student uh, he's a material science engineer he got a master's in chemistry and then demetrius finley has a undergraduate degree in chemical engineering and then a master's in chemistry um, so th- those two I actually put on the project, and I needed a chemical engineer because I need the, the engineering uh, uh, skills. And I tasked them. I said, listen, so, you know, when, there was a solicitation out by DOD, and they wanted to develop a system that could deliver chemicals that could kill pathogens. And you can imagine when, if we're at war, if we want to set up a, a medical facility, and then we need to kill all the pathogens around, right, so that when the wounded come in, they don't get infected. Mm-hmm. And so... They wanted to develop a delivery system that could deliver the chemicals necessary to kill the pathogens, but would biodegrade and go away at the end. So there's no trace of them ever being there. And I was thinking, man, can we do that with cellulose? Can we? And so that's how we started. And so we developed this cellulose bead. But then I started thinking, wait a minute. You know, agriculture is a big problem right now. In agriculture, uh, the fertilizer, number one, the delivery systems are inefficient. Number two, the uh, fertilizer running off into the rivers and, you know, c- causing harm to us because of the drinking water. Mm-hmm. So they're, getting, they're putting toxic chemicals in our drinking water. And so I was thinking, what if we can use, and because I use this term, plant feeding the plant, right? And so I was like, cellulose comes from plants. That would be like a plant feeding the plant, right? So I was like, can we do it? So I went to my group and I said, this is what I want to do. I want to turn this into a delivery, a delivery vehicle. And they said, they went, we went to the table, we put all our skills together, and we came up with a cellulose bead that's porous that we can load nutrients in, and it will um, release those nutrients in, in the soil or in water to feed the plant so that it would grow. And we just got the results back. It works. That's how scientists be thinking, bro. Wait a minute. Can this do that? They just get right. I'm fascinated, right. man. <laughs> and, and, and we, it, it really, and, you know, and, and it, this has trained. You know, this has been a training process for me. Yeah. Because one of the things I've learned is that even though you're trying to solve A problem, don't forget about B. Don't forget about C, right? Because this could be, it could have a multitude 
of uses. Mm-hmm. Right? So so that's one uh, that's what I mean by being very intentional and saying I'm gonna solve this problem but, you know, see the bigger picture. Yeah. yeah. Right. How do you balance all of this, you know, with your family life? So uh my wife is uh Doctor Alicia Curry. She's the dean of a college and so we both have very <clears throat> hectic schedules but she's also the COO in my company oh, yeah. right uh, she's the brain behind the organization right uh, also my DPR is uh, Layla Ali who's from Hattiesburg Mississippi she's Dr. Layla Ali and uh, you know she's had 25 years of business experience and so I'm going to tell you fellas this you know from the, from the bottom of my heart you know if you want to be structured get you a uh, Get you some women, <laughs> and, you're gonna, <laughs> and, you, and you're gonna be very so. They keep me structured, right? Um, <clears throat> they're very good at keeping me on task. They're very good at you know keeping things fluid, right? And keep it running, uh, and and uh, so I, my team. I credit it to my team, even my graduate students. You know, I, I fly a lot. I, I travel around the world a lot. Um, I'll call. They say we're already on it, Doctor Curry, right? So you know, even training them to be very intentional about what they're doing. And, you know, kind of being a little bit hands off. So I'm the type, I'll give you a project and I'll back off because I want you to own that project. I want you to start thinking, you know, I don't want to do the thinking for you, mm-hmm. right? Because when you leave the nest, you got to think on your mm-hmm. own, right? So you got the curry for basketball. You got curry for science. Then we got to find curry for tech, for um, um, um. Soccer, man. <laughs> <laughs> Soccer football. <laughs> I like what you said about, you know, the, uh, the female being a backbone. Because yeah. this guy made me late because I had to go pick him up. See, you know, shout out to Ma. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What's next, what's next for you? How long? How much longer are you in town? Are you, you know, speaking somewhere else in town so people can come check you out? Or what's next for you in the next couple days, weeks? Okay, so next on the agenda, I have to go back to Tuskegee. Uh, to make sure that things are running well with my group. Uh, I left part of them there. Uh, I need to go up to Tuscaloosa to check on my company because I just had a new instrument to come in. Uh, So I need to get that, uh, you know, starting to set up. And then uh, I need to interface, like I said, with a couple more classrooms just to try to, uh, you know, my thing is I really want to set a model for how companies can interface, how industry can interface with education. Because so far, industry interface with education, but they only interface on the research side. There's a whole new genre of ways you can interface with education, and it's needed, right? They need to be in the classrooms, you know, providing what they know so that it can be an innovative type of uh, process, right? Innovative education, right? And people, and then you will find out when education becomes innovative, you have more high school students want to go into STEM mm-hmm. because it, they don't, you know, most high school students think, oh, this is boring, or I got to be a rocket scientist to learn this. No, we need your we need your your way of thinking at the table because no, there's no one way of thinking that's going to solve any problem. I, I win, I, you know, I call them W's. I win because I bring a diverse set of groups to the table. Mm-hmm. Man, that's uh, that's awesome stuff. Yeah. And, uh, well, well wishes. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate the invitation <laughs> to come talk about LLC and, and our mission. I mean, we we are happy to start to, you know, get our message out because, mm-hmm. like I said, we're looking to partner with, you know, industry. We're looking to partner with education. Uh, and we're looking to, the, the, to diversify the field, you know, to make people understand that, you know, all inventions don't have to come from Germany or Russia or one. Right. They they. You know, you have HBCUs mm-hmm. where innovation is taking place mm-hmm. every day, mm-hmm. and and we need you need to go there, immerse yourself in the culture, see see what they have to offer, right? And then how can you help to bring that to the public? Yeah, right. Thank you for speaking about it with us, man. Yeah, yeah, oh, yes. yeah definitely, man. I, I definitely need to find one of those uh, bow bow. Um, Help me out here. Eco friendly. Eco friendly. plastics. Yeah. Bio plastics. There you go. You know one. You know one of the products and plant you, that thing on the soil. You know. Man, you know this. I didn't have my water bottles in it. <laughs> I was like, hey, what? prof going to kill me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But yeah, well, definitely. Well, look, when I made my first product, hopefully you guys bring you back and we can do a demonstration. Oh, definitely. Awesome. definitely. Yeah, that'd, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. there's enough space up in here. Yeah, yeah. enough space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, appreciate you guys checking this podcast out. If you enjoyed what you heard, definitely hit that subscribe button. We've had a pleasure of speaking with Dr. Michael L. Curry, PhD. And uh, well wishes again with everything you got going on. And if Thank you. you. Yeah. This is Stuck in Middle Podcast. And yeah, we out.